30 years from now. They call it hydrostatic uplift when there's a uh, water causing uplift. They're looking into that. Uh, this, this is what I, this is the area I dig into on every project. I no do. pun intended, right? <laughs> That, yeah. that, that space right there is not very wide, so it's going to oh, go, it's it's go, how far back are you going to go? It goes to the whole length of the, so the site is it's basically exactly 100, feet, yeah. 100 feet wide, yeah. 100 feet wide and 160 feet long. Um, you want to ask a question about parking? Yes, it did be parking. There is going to be parking in the garage, in the basement, there will be roughly 60 to 70 parking spaces, which is what we're currently trying to determine based on we go with this building based on the sand in the marsh. And my question was, how do you, how do you, because I, I don't know how it happens, how do you, how do you find out what, what, the, what the soil was like? How do you find that? How do you find out? People way smarter than me do some crazy science. So what, what, what happens with is the drills. geotech engineers will come in with drills that will as it drills deeper and deeper and deeper, it detects the types of soil it, it is encountering. They can tell based on the friction and how hard it is to get it's samples. And then they're able to pull out samples and almost yeah, extract yeah. thin, tall yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this samples. So you can get almost like a, taking out the ground and go, okay, but from here to here we've got marsh, from here to here we've got some stone. I mean, it's pretty fascinating, pretty, pretty, pretty interesting science. And then they probably did about seven or eight drills <laughs> spots all throughout the, our rectangular site. And from that, from the information from each of those drill points, they're able to create that strata map that shows where they're seen. So there's less marsh on one side. But we don't have any marsh as we get close to mission until you get deeper. But if you go back, you've got some both high and low depths. So it's very, very, very interesting science. Marvin said another question. The other, the other part is, because um, I have, I just happened to have gotten a liquid vacuum out for South America, but uh, I have no idea where it came in the middle. <laughs> Everything's liquefied. It's San Francisco. <laughs> and yeah, um, a lot of this area is susceptible to liquid vacuum. Yes. Um, what are you taking, or is there, are you still investigating uh, steps you can take to mitigate liquefaction from doing weird things to your building? Yes. Yeah, so. What's important to note is if the bottom of our building ended in where the green layers are, that would make us susceptible to liquefaction. So if we designed our building to stop in the middle of a green, we would actually have to do one of several different options, such as grouting, pouring grout into that layer of earth to make it stronger, removing that soil that's liquefiable and infilling more. Uh, or you can make sure that your building bears on that yellow stuff and not on the green. And luckily, it, it, it's hard to tell from this drawing, but really those green strips are not massive <coughs> amounts of liquefiable. You're talking a couple of feet worth of potentially liquefiable soil. So the weight of our building and bearing in the yellow areas will uh, minimize to prevent uh, uh, liquefaction happening. Yeah, do you know how that building sinks? Like Millennial? Yeah. That's going to be the lawsuit of the century, isn't it? I don't know. We'll find out in the next they couple years. They, they, they can fix yeah. it. It's they, expensive. They don't have to tear down the whole thing. No, no. They, they'll, they'll be able to fix it, but it will be a lot of kind of what we're talking about, which is going deep into the ground, okay. infilling, grouting. Yeah, we're, we're, done. we're done. We're done. We're just answering we're questions done. now. Yeah, yeah, we're we're the last thing to note, real quick, yeah. is uh, in addition to our building, we will be adding a nice pedestrian even uh, space outdoor area on Lasky Street, um, making it comfortable for pedestrians um, to walk around, hang out. There will be seating areas um, and other aspects to that. Uh, question: Yes. You know, when you've got, who is I'm sorry. Say again. Planning. Uh, we are going to be in front of the planning commission on October 27th. Okay. That's a, our earliest possible date. Yeah. All right. Because our contact our land use chair. For yes. We just recommend presenting you many geotechnical reports. Yeah. I didn't know such but, but, I mean, he's the one that makes, he's, he's the one that officially writes the letters. Great. Right. So, I would definitely so, get you so all the information for the reports. Uh, so I noticed you're following the model of uh, your other property where you put in a, 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 a park or a mini park. Yes. So, so you're following the model that you had before. 
Are you talking about our dog oh, puppy? No, no, no. Oh, no, Moso, uh, the fifth yeah. and full one. Yeah. So it's not as big right as okay. that because we're on a small street contained site. But you're following that. Yeah, we're, we're not open space. space. Yeah, okay. we're, we're, we're improving the open space around right. so the actual alley itself as yeah, opposed to a cut through. Okay. Right. Yes. So your open space would be we the, the, have the street level, yes. Um, the rooftop and the decks um, are, are for tenants. All right, and, uh, any one last question? Just one move last on. question. You mentioned uh, parking a little bit, and then you also mentioned um, ground floor retail. I don't know if you are that far along, but as far as how large it's going to be, is one? It's going well. It's over several. We don't know. We don't know tenant profile yet. Um, essentially, it's a little over 2,000, 2,012 square feet, all, all along Mission. So um, it had the ability to be divvied up into two, three spots, or be one large uh, commercial space. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we do have to move on. Uh, thank yeah. you again for yeah. your time. Three more meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely, and we'll follow up and get you the information you need. Okay, our next uh, uh, agenda item is, uh, is there some, is Manuel here from the, uh, well, then you're up. Oh, yeah. uh, you were here before, right? I was here before. Oh, I just saw it. It's been a while. Oh, you're sorry. Today's for slavery. This is an R or something. We don't use it as a product. We don't know if you get it. Um, no, uh, I did not Well, there's a question about this. Okay. How are you doing tonight? Oh, okay. Okay, yes. Do you have to get over to Dr. No, I had a nap. I had a nap. Oh, you take a nap after work? Oh, you do. Okay. Do you want to just get back to me? Um, yeah, I'll be in the city tomorrow. Here, okay. I'm a consultant, technically. Actually. Yeah, you can borrow that. We'll just give you a card. Give us your card. You can borrow it. Just get it yeah, back to us. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Now, if you gave us a large donation, we would have her all on this and her all on that, you know. Because there have been members that, for. Uh, yes, no, no, but you're making a point. Uh, everybody comes to our meetings and they say, there What do you, you have? And we, we can't. Uh, you know, we like enough stuff to the meetings uh, as it is. Uh, we have, I'll tell you what. I'll delete that to you. No, no, because we have a uh, backup. Uh, uh, Susan, did, did you want to be lugging the. It's uh, old, but do you want it? Uh, we could use it, yeah. Right. Yours. Yours. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's something you guys Because a lot of people, the presenters, they say, "Who do you have one?" So we just talked to Marvis. Yeah, I think it's really hard to. Now we don't have to break lighting or anything. Come to see you guys. And then what you should do is I can get the manual online still. I was short, short. Yeah. So, yeah. It's simple. You just plug it in. You yeah. plug in the cord. Uh huh. Pretty simple. So now the presenters ask what we have. Thank you. 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 How are you doing, folks? I'm Norman Rodriguez. I'm presenting on behalf of Yes on Prop Q. Uh, we'd love to let you guys know a little bit about this measure, answer any questions, and then seek your personal support as individuals of the community. Thank you. Okay, I'll move from everyone. So, uh, Proposition Q uh, addresses one of the most visible signs of homelessness that we have today in San Francisco, which is uh, tent encampments. Uh, we know we have over 7,000 folks who are homeless. We know, and maybe some of you folks know these folks, at least 71% of those who are homeless were San Francisco residents, are San Francisco residents. 
nearly 50% have substance abuse or undergoing substance abuse. Um, and there are 79 encampment sites as a whole. So all facts have been brought together by the Department of Homelessness. Thankfully, we now have the Department of Homelessness. It's about a month old, and they've unveiled plans for development for what we all know is a solution, which is housing. So we've got coming our way 300 new shelter beds a year. We have six navigation centers within two years. Right now, we have one, and I can answer questions about that. Um, and we've just found out that we have 2,000 vacant SRO units, which is apparently what's within this building. Uh, so there are developments on the way for our folks. What Proposition Q does is it specifically targets folks who are in tent encampments and brings those services to those folks, right? So what, what it does essentially is a clearing of encampments, the process by which encampments get cleared. So what happens is when the Department of Homelessness is known to have housing available and shelter, what they have to do and what this measure says is that they have to offer shelter to the folks that are in tent encampments. They have to offer transportation to that shelter or offer transportation to loved ones to supportive service housing, whether inside the city or outside the city. Uh, this measure comes up as a bit of a fairness moment between two sides where we have folks who are homeless and who are in need and don't necessarily want to be in tent encampments but we also have the neighborhoods that many of you folks have walked by that are dealing with some of the negative aspects of tent encampments, um, which not to say that everyone who is homeless or is in a tent encampment is a part of any negative activity, but this is a bit of a balancing act. So this would allow for clearing of tent encampments under very strict rules that there has to be housing available for folks within those tent encampments and the process to transport them to them. It's given a 24 hour notice after the reach out has been done, after the relationships have been built, and the understanding for these uh, shelter services and these, these uh, housing services are available. And then at the, after the 24 hour notice, uh, any encampments that are any belongings that are still within an encampment will be cleared, brought to storage facility site, which by law, those folks will have to know uh, where they are, the process by which they can return, get their items back. Um, and up to 90 days of storage for those folks. So that's the general gist, but I'd love to clarify. What do you do for people with dogs? People with what? With dogs. People and dogs? With dogs. <laughs> people with dogs? So that's actually a really good question. So one encampment has already been cleared by the Department of Homelessness. is the Isaiah Creek. Some of you folks may have seen it in, I believe, in the Chronicle. So what these folks did is the encampment reach out team, this is when the team comes out, they've gone to the encampments ahead of time, and they acted as almost like caseworker. So they took an individual and individual to know what their needs were. So in case they had a dog, or they were with children, or they were living with their partner, they were able to navigate them to the appropriate service, which in the case right now would be a navigation sensor, which allows for pets as well as uh, partners. Um, my other question I have is, right. Balances off of that. Isn't this more of what's called criminalization of homeless? And isn't this what the United Nations Human Rights Commission declared the United States is the worst abuser of the human rights of the homeless in the last April? So I uh, I will say two San things. San Francisco is up there towards the top of the top five. Oh, so two things to think. So I believe that there are there's reasons before that, and that's not that doesn't uh, associate Prop Q with it. There's about 35 um, standard of living laws that bring us towards that, and I think like care not cash being a couple of those. Um, Prop Q does not criminalize homelessness at all. There is no uh, there is no arrest. There's no citations. There's no penalty for having a tent. Prop Q provides the process by which if a neighborhood is dealing under the stresses that come with some of the negative aspects with some camps, the process by which after these relationships have been built, how we bring these folks into services. Uh, another point of why this comes up is because currently there isn't a, a process by which to bring folks into services. So depending on the unit that comes to those tent encampments, folks can have their belongings taken away from them like that or they can be told in that moment that they need to leave. 
So this provides a barrier that says you need at least 24 hours, you need to have everything in, or in place, and you need to offer that as well as transportation. And it also co cuts out police entirely. The only folks who can enforce the, 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 uh, the clearing is the new Department of Homelessness. And to piggyback on that, um, Jane Kim just had a hearing yesterday. Uh, yesterday or Friday? Whichever. Uh -huh. yeah. I have, I have, I have a license collector here. Um, on her legislation, what would this proposition do to that legislation? So, uh, I, there's a little bit more to this because there is a controversy. There's two different sides of the politics of this. So, I don't believe Jane Kim's legislation is actually uh, one that she intends to pass. She, in the, the hearing I was there, she brought out some homeless advocates that she was saying how she doesn't really feel that there needs to be another law regarding homelessness, but she's saying it as an example. Uh, what hers does is it mandates that there needs to be a human uh, housing development plan per individual that's cleared from a tent encampment, and that 90 days worth of housing has to be uh, available for folks. Um, so it's essentially Proposition Q, but with added uh, bureaucracy, if you will. There's more things that the city needs to do. Um, we think that it would not work well for the folks in encampments or the neighborhoods. A, because you cannot say that for every individual what they need is 90 days, nor can we say that right now we have 90 days worth of housing for anybody. So her law in, in that circumstance would never be existent. And B, um, what was I saying, that the development plan uh, the housing development plan per individual is, is something that's tremendously work intensive for an individual to create that. The city probably doesn't have the resources for it. Uh, I understand at one point there's got to be an answer to the idea of removing the campus, okay, from, from being in campsites. Um, this, it seems like this is something that gets misconstrued by law enforcement on the rest of them on or otherwise. When they say you got 24 hours to get to yourself out of here, uh, and the idea of the housing, they won't see the housing when you, you come to them to present to them, so they won't see the housing. They take your word for it, so you might, they might take it to the housing as it is already established uh, shelters in the city, right? Even though they're not all that wonderful, but they're run down and broken and just anything else. So, what are you what are you trying to do about about uh, giving the people hope in all of this? Right. And not only that. I don't think it can be a 24-hour time limit on the situation because some people are probably going to not show up for various reasons. They don't want to be there. People yeah. steal their stuff, whatever, right? So I think it should be a little more time to give them to that, to that, to that, to that you come to and meet them, you talk to them, blah, 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 blah. And then the next time you come out, you come out and talk to them. You can take them to a place and let them stay it. And then, you know, this could be your place, blah, 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 so on. And you can go from there. I don't think um, 24 hours is if, if you don't like the, see, this is the thing about propositions. It's very simple. If you don't like how it's work written, don't vote for it. If you like how it's written, vote for it. So that's that's the simplest way to look at it. Because it's all that's stuff. your solution, but I was asking a question. Thank so uh, so I think it's a great uh, a great question. Uh, we get it often. So again, what we said, this has already happened. Uh, the Department of Homeless has already found one in Camden site in Isaiah Creek. It had around 50 people. They spent three weeks before clearing it. So exactly what you said. So this gives them, this Proposition Q in no way restricts them to just 24 hours. There's 79 encampments. The Department of Homelessness already knows who they are, where they are, and they're already taking the process to go and reach out to them. So this is only saying that when they know that the housing is available, and they do know because they are the department and that's what they're charged with. So as they know what's up and coming, they will be reaching out to these folks ahead of time because that is the only way to build trust. So that is a process that they're going to be doing. Proposition Q will just say for the folks, and there's a very small percentage of folks who are resistant, not because they don't trust, but just because they've enjoyed the lifestyle, that to be fair to the neighborhood, when that housing becomes available, there's 24 hour notice to be put up. But at no, at, in no way, sense or form, does this stop the department from doing their reach out and building trust beforehand. So um, how many um, units, if, if a person um, gets housing and SROs and stuff, um, how many units will be harm reduction? Harm reduction? Harm reduction. 
Could you elaborate a little bit more? Harm reduction is where um, you meet a person where they're at, and the little by little, they uh, work on issues that be it addiction and stuff like that, because I know lots of people that went the harm reduction route uh, at different SROs, and. Uh,